Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. It's another day back in the kitchen again. Hmm. I told you guys I'll be doing so many of these videos of late, but I'll change into other stuff. If you like them, you can comment below and say you love them or what you'd love you to see me cook. We do some of the most simplest meals to cook. I do I cook what I eat in the house or something that I know how to cook or something that I have learned to cook. I don't do complicated things, so I do the simplest meals possible. So if you don't know my name, Shiro James is my name. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for clicking and thank you for watching my videos. I'm very, very grateful to the 1,400 above foot one. Yes. Thank you so much. Now I'll sana. Thank you for subscribing. Continue subscribing. Continue sharing my videos to your loved one, your friends, your family. As always, I say, and we'll go far away and we'll become a great community of friends here. So today I'm going to repeat a recipe that I had done earlier. One of my subscribers asked me about it because there are some parts that were missing in that recipe. It's the chapati recipe, as the title says. So today we are going to do step by step of the how I make chapatis, soft chapatis. Because on the previous video, if you have already seen it, there is a part that went missing. I don't know how. I think I was recording, but I forgot to near the record button so i missed a huge chunk of that part so carol here is the recipe you've been asking for so long this sorry girl it has taken a little bit longer but here it is so let's get that here and get started okay so here we have our basin we'll need that we have our flour this is one kg uh all purpose from baking flour then I have this atomic flour. I'll use this is the brown flour. I'll mix those two. Then I have my water, uh, salt, cooking oil, some salt, and uh, some sugar. So. We are going to start with our I hope you can see guys sometimes I miss yeah so we are going to start with our flour this is one kg but I'm going to use like half of it yeah that's about half of it then I'm going to add like a little bit of this there we go the brown like one cup of the brown then we are going to add a teaspoon or two of salt then also two Let's do three teaspoons of sugar. We'll mix this up together. So we mix the dry ingredients together like that. Then I'm going to add some oil. Just like a one or two tablespoon of oil like that mix that together like that then now we're going to add a little bit of water it's lukewarm water so 
will be adding gradually kidogo 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 till we have the perfect dough We are just going now to knead our dough. Shouldn't be so dry and shouldn't be too hard. As in, like it shouldn't be too soft and too dry. I don't know what I'm saying. Shouldn't be too soft nor too dry. So we keep kneading. My dough is a bit sticky, you can see, so I'll just add a little bit of the, the white flour until I get there that it's not sticking on my hands. So now I'm going to transfer it. My surface is clean. Just going to add a little bit of lucky dog to then continue kneading it. Just push and pull, push and pull. But it's not necessarily that you have to do this on a, on a surface, you can do it on the base interior. Satisfied that your flour is well kneaded. Uh, we are just kneading it as much as we can to make it all the air bubbles to be out and then it will be even. Like you don't have some bits of flour in between. So, and uh, I think we are done. It's just like uh, we, we've taken less than 10 minutes to get the perfect dough. So you see, it's not sticking on my surface. That's how your dough should be. Then we just make it to the ball. Huh, look, it's sticking. Okay. So it's just like that in a ball. Then I'll place it back here on my basin and let, let it rest. I'll cover it and then let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then we come and go to the next step. So our flour has been, our dough I mean, oh my god, it's stuck on this. Oh, okay, it has been resting for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm just going to transfer it here. Just add a little bit of flour. Like that this. Then we are going to transfer it there. After dusting a little bit of flour, then we are going to roll it out it's like that see that it's easy to do it's not taking too much effort Just like that. Then we are going to. If you have a brush, you can brush somewhere with it. But if you don't have, don't mind. You can use a spoon like me. Just like that. Then spread it. Not a lot. Just like a teaspoon or one tablespoon, depending on how much flour or dough you made 
So there we go. Then after that, using my knife, I'm going to cut like that. cutting I just take one piece like this and fold it like that like that but this one is small so I'm going to add that much then I tuck inside so this is the thickness we need like that is the thickness we require such your palm Whatever can hold in your palm, that is the thickness. You put it aside, you continue rolling the rest. If you get to the end, you just pick and add there, and then you tuck it that size. There you go. Then and go on until you are done with all the pieces. One, two, three, four, five, about ten. This is a small one, eleven. Ten pieces of chapatis. So I'm going to show you the next step after this is now rolling out the pieces. If you have done a lot of chapatis, what you do, you cover it so that you prevent it from drying. But mine are very few because I have to cook like two times only. So I'll take one, get some flour, dust it on my surface, like that, like that, and then I'm going to now roll it, like that. My circle is not so perfect, but you can try and make yours as perfect and make sure that it's even evenly spread like no pieces that are tiny than the others see about that much is the thickness we need and it's not so light and it's not so light in the middle make sure you don't overdo the middle because when you go and place it on the pan it gets to get dry in the middle and your chapatis will be dry in the middle like they will be crunchy they will be so so dry and we need them soft so after you roll it let me show you the next I step what there we go so we take our pan and place it on the heat on a medium high high heat there we go we place it and wait it for it to get hot uh, if, you have, if you have the heavy scarlet, it's the best for cooking chapati rather than a pan. But as for me, I don't have that, so I'm going to use the pan. So we let it to get hot. Then when it's hot enough, you take your rolled chapati, this one, and you place it there. I don't know whether mine is hot enough, but... I think it's hot. Yeah. You place it there. You let it cook on its own side. You start seeing it change the color, like uh, to from the whitish to like I don't know how to describe it, but as you can see, yeah, you just let it cook and you keep checking so that you don't burn. The chapatis. Uh, as this one is going on, I'll be going on rolling the rest of the dough so that I show you how I go about it. See, after you stand those little brown, golden brown pieces, what you do next is you turn to your other side and wait also on that side to cook as well. 
so you see it's done so what i do I, I after it's cooked like that i remove it and place it somewhere like that then i'll do the next one so come dust some flour on there and we roll out to roll like a few of them so that I know you I show you how I go faster when I cook chapati so that you don't get confused. So I will roll that one here. Yeah. So like that one is done. I just this then I'll do another one. In the meantime I had put off my gas by rolling this one because the pan would have overheated. So, go on. So, this one is a perfect circle. So, I just place like that. So, I wish I had somebody to. My cooking area is a bit too far from me, so I have to keep moving. That way. So now let's go back to the cooking area. We have our already rolled out like five of them. So let's do the next part. Our pan is hot, so we I just picked one of the chapatis I rolled and place it there and move it like this with your hand and wait for it to cook. Just keep rolling it like that and make sure you are careful not to burn yourself when you are rolling. Sometimes you get to touch the pan, so be careful. So, as it cooks, you check that side is done, you place it like that. The one that I had done earlier, I just pick it and place it on top of that, like that. So that it helps because this one is hot and this one has cooled a little bit this one will help you to hold here so you check it well done so you just take it and place it on your tray or somewhere and you put a lid over like that so you take another one continue and then it's done so i can place it then take take one of these and place it there one or two there then i have my cooking oil here i'll place it there then i'll just add it i'll just move like that and add my cooking oil like that, like a one tablespoon. Make sure at this point you're not cold. Be careful not to burn yourself. So you just take that one is done. Then what I do, I pick these two and then I turn this one like that and I place that one there. Then I add some cooking oil. Then I check that one is done. What I do, I pick one of these and then I turn and I place this one here. In the meantime, I can add an extra one on top like that so that I don't get burned. I don't know why I this a little bit further. So like that. So I have to have not added oil on that. What I do, I add one, about a tablespoon of oil. Remember guys, I have not taken out the one that's already done on both sides. So as that one is cooking, I can lift these two and take this one. 
that way it makes it sense that my chapatis doesn't have oil like on it because the oil has already drained on that other part and then i place it on my cooking tray or whatever i'm cooking then i come back so this one already has cooked you take this two you turn that one you place those you add your cooking oil you keep turning like that That way you don't get to get burnt. You see, I don't have any oil on my hand. But when you cook, I cook one one because of touching. It gets, you get oily on your hands and you start getting burnt. So I check on that one. It's done. A little bit more. I lowered my heat. So it's done. So. So it's done on both sides. Like I take so one, I think, place it on my hand, I take those and then place that one there. And then I add some cooking oil. Just like that. Then I go and place another one. Then this one which has already cooked, I just pick it. Place those ones and place it on my service area, just like that. So this one already had put oil, so it's done. I take those two, turn this like that, place those. This one is done. So I have now two remaining. And that one is cooked on that side and put it on. Turn over that one and place. Okay. And put it. So you see, it's done on this side and the other side is done. So what I do, I just take this one, turn it like that. I don't remove this. Take my cooking oil up there. And using my spoon, I roll it like that. Then I take this one and remove it. So I'll remain with one. This one you don't hold with your hands. You get burnt. So you do like that, check it's done, turn it, and then close down, right there, and then keep turning it to the spoon. can lower your heat as you continue to roll out the next batch so that is it guys i'll just fast forward the other parts uh, i'll do the rest of the part of camera because i've already shown you how majority that basically most almost everything that's how you do it so now i'm done cooking my chapatis they are here let me show you and then the next a process, the final cut process of how to store them. So here is where I was placing them as I removed them from the pan and I, I was covering them. So we are going to do it the Kenya way. I have my basin, I have my karatasi from the unga uh, at the edge. So I just remove this. Like 
But if you have paper towel, the best, you can take your paper towel and then place them on the bottom. Uh, it's placed like this because when you, play, you take your chapatis here and you place them inside there. That. You place the paper or the paper tiles so that they don't get the, the first one on the paper doesn't get soggy because of the sweating. So what you do, you do like that. Even when you place them in the hot pot, you have to do that when they are hot. And then you just like that and the staples will not get dry like because when you leave them open like this they tend to get dry and hard so that's why you have to place a paper and cover it you can even cover on top with a paper towel so that's how my chapatis are done so we're going to try one this, this one was the first one, I think. You see the way they are soft. They are very soft, just like this. And very soft and yummy. I wish you guys can have some taste of them. Yeah, basically that's how chapatis are cooked. Wow. Let me face the camera. So, Caro, I hope I have not lost you this time around. I think I have done all the processes. So, hope you enjoy cooking your chapatis and give me the feedback. Let me know how you did it. Thank you for always watching my videos, for always clicking on them, and for liking and commenting. Continue doing so. You encourage me to do more and more. I'm trying my best to keep them coming and coming and coming. Thank you so, so much. I love you all. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. The most important, don't forget to subscribe. Please, let's get to 2000 before the end of this year. I believe we can do that. I believe we can do that. So if you share my videos to your loved one, tell a friend to tell a friend. You are like uh, 1400. If each one of you was to bring somebody else, that will be 2800. So guys, let's do that. Let's do that. Thank you. Now I'll pen that to Sana. And to the next one. Bye-bye. Mm. Yummy.